Welcome everyone to the Young Readers One Book Festival. I'm Hannah Glissendorf and I am the director of the Black Hills Reads Initiative through United Way of the Black Hills. I would also like to introduce all my friends from the South Dakota Statewide Family Engagement Center who have partnered with us on this project. Hi, I'm Selena Lehman. And I am Tyresha Greyhorse. We are here today with Jennifer Widman from the South Dakota Humanities Council and Juana Medina the author and illustrator of two books, Juana and Lucas and Juana and Lucas Big Problemas. We also have some of your fellow third graders from around the state um, that will be asking Juana some questions today about her book and what it's like to be an author. And we have a lot of exciting things um, planned for you today for the Young Readers One Book event. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hello, young readers, and welcome to this special event. My name is Jennifer Widman, and I'm from the South Dakota Humanities Council, and I'm so happy you're joining us today for a conversation with Juana Medina, the author and illustrator of the 2024 Young Readers One Book South Dakota, which I have right here, Juana and Lucas, Dos Grandes Changes. The Young Readers One Book is a program that's been going on since 2014. We give copies of the same book to students like you all around South Dakota so you can read it, talk about it, and do fun activities in your schools, libraries, and homes. Then we invite the author or the illustrator, and in this case, the author and illustrator are the same person, to come to South Dakota and meet all of you. You are some of the 15,000 third graders across South Dakota who received copies of this beautiful book. And we were able to share the books with you because of some very generous friends who helped us pay to publish and distribute them. You will find their logos on your book. They include Valley Queen Cheese, the Larson Family Foundation, First Bank and Trust, and the Northern Hills Federal Credit Union. We also depend on the National Endowment for the Humanities and on many, many donors around the state and country who just wanna support reading. I am so thankful to these sponsors for helping us to get these books into your hands. Finally, I'm especially excited for all of you to meet the author. Juana Medina was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia, and now lives in Northern Virginia, two places that are pretty far from South Dakota. She has written and illustrated many children's books, including the chapter book series, Juana and Lucas, winner of the prestigious Pura Belpre Award, and two International Latino Book Awards. Juana's passion for storytelling has led her to work on exciting projects, ranging from illustration and animation to interactive design, with numerous clients, including many book publishers, the Library of Congress, and PBS. She teaches at George Mason University School of Art, and she especially enjoys visiting schools and libraries around the country, encouraging children, like all of you, to read and find power in their own personal stories. Please join me in welcoming Juana Medina. Jennifer, thank you so much for such a lovely introduction. I'm so excited to be here today with all of you in South Dakota, even while I'm in Virginia. Uh, I'm grateful for this invitation and for the ability to be able to share not just one, but two books. Um, so here we have Juana and Lucas, and let me share with you, here's the cover for Juana and Lucas, but if we go all the way back, or well, not all the way back, but just to the middle of the book, sort of, I'm getting there. You can also see Juana and Lucas' big problemas. So there's two books in one. Um, I wonder if we should read some from Juana and Lucas. And since you will all get your very own copies, thanks to the South Dakota Humanities Council, uh, I'll just read the beginning of Juana and Lucas, and then you can read on your own or with your loved ones the rest of the books. How does that sound? Onward. Let's start with Juana and Lucas. Chapter one. My name is Juana. It is spelled J-U-A-N-A, -A, and it's pronounced Juana. And here I am, and here's my best friend, Lucas. I'll tell you more about Lucas in a minute. Things I like are drawing, sometimes on paper, 
and sometimes on other surfaces. Do any of you like to draw? I'm sure I'm in good company with a lot of artists. Just make sure that you draw what you're supposed to. Don't get in trouble. Astroman. Astroman needs no rockets to fly in space. His intergalactic suit lets him... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got lost. His intergalactic suit and shiny helmet cover all of him and let him glide from galaxy to galaxy faster than I can say Jupiter. How fast can you say Jupiter? Take a minute. Yeah, that's very fast. He knows all the constellations from A to Z and can redirect a comet by simply blowing on it as if it were a candle flame on a cupcake. No one else can do that. And here you can see Astroman flying through space. My favorite food of all foods, more than cheese and chocolate and ice cream, but not all together, is Brussels sprouts. Do any of you like Brussels sprouts? There might be a few hands here and there. I understand if you don't like Brussels sprouts. It's sort of an acquired taste. In Bogota, Brussels sprouts are called repollitas. Can you say repollitas? I'm sure you can. Rolling those R's can be a little bit hard. The world has many cities, but Bogota is where I am and where school is and where mommy and my abuelos and Lucas are and where I play with Eric and Daniel and where I get into trouble with Juli. Bogota, Colombia in South America is the city that is closest to my heart. We all have places that are close to our hearts. They can be cities, they can be someone's home, they can be someone's heart. Maybe a grandmother or an aunt or a dear friend or a teacher. Maybe school is a wonderful place for some of you or all of you. I love Bogota. Love it. And here's why. Bogota has more neighborhoods than I can count. There's a financial district, a flower district, galleries, houses, little coffee shops, bookstores, it just never stops. There are lots of parks in Bogota too. The Ciclovia is a never ending route of bike lanes all across the city. I'm still learning how to ride a bike. So I haven't been able to go on every bit of bike lane across the city. It would take me ages to do it, but I like the idea of pedaling through town. And I'll show you a tiny detail right here that lets us know that Juana, the character, is still learning how to ride a bike. You might have noticed right here that there are some training wheels. So sometimes when we read, we can read letters and words, and sometimes we read pictures and they give us clues into what is being said. There are many things we can read. During the day, the weather is mild, as if it is is eternally springtime. Then the night comes and the ground turns freezing cold. So everyone always keeps a pair of slippers by their bed. Here are my slippers. Do any of you have slippers? Maybe some of you do. There are many trees, mostly old and almost as tall as buildings. In the daytime, they give shade from the incredibly strong sun. At night, when illuminated from below by the street lights, they make shadows of all shapes and sizes. In Bogota, Colombia, everyone speaks Espanol. There might be a few who speak other languages, but to understand one another, we all mainly speak Spanish. Lucas doesn't speak Spanish because he doesn't speak at all. He's a dog. At bedtime, chances are you'll find me in bed with a book or dos or tres. Reading books is one of my most favorite things. Do any of you like reading books? I'm pretty sure I'm in good company with great readers. Sometimes mommy will come into my room and tell me to turn off the lights. Ya mismo means right now just when the stories I'm reading are absolutely impossible to put down. Having to turn off the lights and stop reading inmediatamente 
is definitely an emergency. I grab a flashlight, the fresh the flashlight, put the covers up over my head, and go back to reading. Even more than Asterman, even more than reading, drawing, Brussels sprouts, and Bogota all together, I love my furry amigo, Lucas. He is the smartest and most amazing perro ever born. I can't think of a better friend than Lucas. He's my absolute thing, no single doubt about it, best amigo. Some say Lucas is neurotic. I don't think so. He is actually quite calm, especially while sleeping. And here we see Lucas sleeping under the covers right by my side. So I'm going to stop right here and let you find out what happens next in this book. And I'd love to hear any thoughts or any questions you might have. It seems like even some of you might already have some questions and I look forward to answering them. Well, thank you for reading those first few pages, Juana. It was really interesting. Let's take some time to learn a little bit more about our author and illustrator and give you all watching the opportunity to turn and talk with each other. Let's watch this question from a third grader, Hank, and listen to Juana's answer. Hi, Juana. My name is Hank from South Park Elementary in Belfouche. When did you first realize you, you wanted to be an author illustrator? Hank, thank you so much for your question. It's such a good question to ask. I, for the longest time, didn't think I would be an artist or an illustrator or an author. Um, there are plenty of people in my family that drew and people that loved stories. And I just thought that was something that we could all do. And it wasn't until I was a grown up and I started hearing other people say, oh, I can't draw. That I just felt like, what do you mean you can't draw? Do you need paper in order to draw? I can give you my crayons if you want to draw. And, and then realizing that not everyone is able to draw. Um, and I also found that I'm not that great at singing or I'm not that great at running, for example. So we all have strengths. And in my case, it happened to be that I loved telling stories and I happened to be good at it. And if I worked some more, then I could become even better. Um, so it took me a long, long time to realize that. But with time and studying and reading a lot, I was able to recognize that I could come up with different ways of telling stories. And that was a very interesting thing to me. Um, I wonder if through your question, we could draw a little bit. How does that sound? All right, so I'm going to switch screens and share my screen so that you can see what I'm drawing. So there we go. I am going to share my screen. Let me open here and move my screen so that we can see a blank page. And one thing I recognize by telling stories is that even combining the silliest of things, I could come up with new ways to tell stories. And I wonder if that might happen to you too. Maybe you are an author as well, Hank, or maybe some of your classmates are authors and you're an illustrator. I don't know. But sometimes when I think of things that would be impossible or improbable, it's when stories start coming to mind. I don't know if you've ever seen on the street a turtle riding a scooter. Maybe you have. I have never seen one. But sometimes by doing things and using my imagination in a way that feels new to me, I'm able to think of stories. And maybe by seeing this drawing, I can think, well, where could this little turtle be going to? Um, is he going to meet his friends or is he running an errand? And if so, what kind of errand is it? Or where is he going to meet his friends? Maybe they are all getting ice cream. So 
then I can think of more details about it. Maybe we can give him a t-shirt. Um, and maybe we can draw here a nice green shop. And draw some of his friends ready to join him to eat ice cream. Now, who could be at the shop? Maybe a shark owns the ice cream shop with all his big teeth. And here he is giving ice cream to somebody. And maybe let's think of who could be receiving that ice cream. It could be a little fish in a bowl. But as we start doing this, we start making the story more and more complicated, right? How is he going to eat his ice cream? How is he going to move around? Does he have a little cart that moves him around? Does he need someone to push that cart for him? And is the shark in a tank as well? Or how is he staying alive? How is that happening? And then we start to have so many details to answer to. And the cool thing is, in stories, you can so many things up. So again, there's many ways for us to use our imagination and our creativity and think of becoming authors and illustrators. Maybe in the future, I will be listening to you and how you build stories. Thanks again for your question, man. Thank you so much for showing us how well that you can illustrate. Now it is your turn. Please take a moment to turn and talk with your fellow classmates about what do you want to be when you grow up and why. And now we have another question from a different third grader. Um, this third, third grader's name is Matthias. And let's hear from him. Hi, Lana. My name is Matthias from Custer Elementary School. Are the characters in your story based off of real people? Is Lucas a real dog? Can you tell us about them? Matthias, what a wonderful question. Thank you so much for asking it. Yes, many of the characters within the books are uh, based on real people that I had the fortune of growing up with. Um, so my mom is very real, even though I changed some details. Um, Lucas indeed was my dog growing up, though he looked a little bit different. You, I will make sure to share a picture uh, so that you can see him. Um, but Lucas was so special to me, no matter how I made him look in the drawings, it was his spirit that I really, really wanted to make sure that I could share with readers. Uh, I miss him every day. If he was still alive, he would be in dog years, like 400 and some years old, which is a really long, long, long life. Um, and a way to honor how much I loved him and how much happiness he brought to me. I decided to have him live forever in the books that I share. Um, now I have a dog named Rosita or Rosie, depending who's calling her. Uh, and she takes very long naps while I work, which I appreciate. Uh, but yeah, many of the characters are real. Uh, what about maybe drawing some of the characters? How does that sound? All right, let's try it out. Let me again share my screen. All right, so here I have a blank page 
And let's start with Lucas, since you asked about Lucas. With long ears, beautiful snout, and the eyes, which I wanted to make sure were super expressive. Those, those ears are looking to me a little like rabbit ears. Let's switch them a little bit so that we don't get anyone confused. Maybe we can give Lucas longer droopy ears and here legs and his collar because I never wanted him to get lost and then his hind legs which are like sort of like number twos but one is shifted around and his belly and his tail wagging so happy there's Lucas, and let's move on to Juana. So when I was little, I often had pigtails. And my cousin gave me once uh, a haircut that no one had asked for, especially not me. So she went snip, snip on my pigtails. And so after that, I had to wear a little barrette to keep my hair in place. Um, even when it grew longer again. And the ears and the face and the little nose and the eyes and a big smile. Happy to be with you. And let's draw an arm up here. You're welcome to try these drawings if it's okay with your teachers to try them now or maybe later. Or maybe you can draw something else. You don't have to draw what I'm drawing, obviously. And waving all the way to South Dakota. And here's one leg. And here's another leg. Oh, that leg looks a little longer than the other. Does that ever happen to you while you're drawing? Things turn out a little bit different than you expect. It happens to me all the time. But that's part of drawing, discovering how our hand moves and it makes things sometimes a little bit different than what we were expecting. And that's okay. We can, in this case, I'm going to use an eraser or we can just change things around and tell a different story. Gotta go with the flow when we're artists. There's Juana and there's Lucas. Thanks again, Matthias, for your question. Thank you, Juana, for showing us how you draw your characters in real time. That was one of the coolest things I've ever got to experience. Um, so thank you. Now I want you to turn and talk to your classmates again. And this time um, you're going to discuss who are the important people or animals in your life. I hope you guys were able to have some wonderful conversations. I want to tell you, I have an important animal in my life and it is my cat and her name is Coconut. This next question comes from our friend Harper. Hi, Juana. My name is Harper from West Elementary School. How do you handle writer's block? Harper, this is such an important question. Thank you so much for sharing it. Writer's block. Mm. Um, I think we all sometimes feel like we can't get ideas on the page. I don't know if it has ever happened to any of you that you can't really come up with the answers that you need for your homework. Hopefully not that much, but it happens sometimes. And 
I think whenever I have felt like it's very hard to find the answer to what I need, especially if it's in writing or drawing, there are multiple things that have worked throughout the years. One is to stop and give myself a little break. I'm not saying long vacation and just drop everything and not care, but just at least a little break. It can be even taking the deep, deep breaths for a couple of seconds and trying to see if that helps just get some oxygen into my brain and think a little bit better. Um, sometimes if I have the time to go on a little walk or call a friend or take a nap uh, or swim, which I love to do, then maybe I do some of that just to try to forget a little bit about all the pressure that I'm feeling because I'm not getting the answer I'm expecting and then move on. Something that I've noticed that helps me a lot is to read from other authors, from fellow colleagues and people I admire and see the words that they choose and recognize how incredibly smart and talented they are. And sometimes that inspires me. Um, and talking with friends and telling friends, hey, I'm having trouble with this. Can you help me? Has also been a great way to move past challenges that I'm having trouble overcoming. So again, don't be afraid to pause for a moment. Give yourself time. Look for different resources, right? Or inspiration in different ways that you might not be thinking of. And ask for help. That would be my recipe to move past a rut. Thank you for such an important question, Harper. I appreciate it. Let me share with you just a little bit how sometimes I think of new ideas when I'm having trouble. And something that I like doing is thinking of three animals. Maybe you have your own animals and three vehicles, different vehicles. And they could be as silly as it gets. So for example, we could go with a bear and here's a bear. And this bear has to wear a very good helmet. And we draw the eyes. And pause. And the rest of the face, of course. And maybe we can give this bear a vest. Here's the bear's little tail. And hind legs. And we can give him a different kind of scooter since we already drew a turtle on a scooter, right? I don't know if you've ever seen a bear riding a scooter. I haven't, thankfully. But it helps me think of new ideas. Again, as I was saying earlier, it makes me think well, where could this bear be going to? Is he in a rush or is he just enjoying the beautiful scenery in Black Hills? Is he going to meet some friends or running an errand or is this his job? And the more I think about it, I have to think, well, what could his name be? Or where does he live? Or who is important in his life? And that way I start learning more about the characters, right? Let's give him some decorations on his on his vest. This very serious biker. Um now we have more details. And maybe we can add another character. So we have a bear on a on a scooter. And maybe we can have let me draw this in a separate layer. I don't think you have many of these in South Dakota, thankfully. Yeah. 
Applicator. And maybe this alligator could be riding a bike. Again, I've never seen such a thing, thankfully. I think I would be quite worried if I did. Um, let's play the leg right here. And then you have to start thinking of how you're using the space and what is important. And I don't think drawings have to be perfect. And you might be thinking, wow, how can she draw so well? I'll tell you something. I've been drawing since I was very, very young and I didn't give up. I've met many grown-ups that stopped drawing and started doing other things. But I never stopped drawing. And I've been practicing and practicing drawing for such a long time that it helps. And still, sometimes I get things wrong. But that's okay. I just keep practicing. So this bike has to be a little bit different from a bike you or I would ride simply because alligators are built differently from humans, right? But let's try to keep the bike recognizable enough so that we can tell it is a bike. Even if it is a little bit different than the usual bike. And again, we can think of where he's riding to, what could be important in this alligator's life. Let's make sure that he has a helmet to keep him safe. And maybe we can give this alligator a basket and we can think of what could an alligator be carrying around in a basket? It could be that he's carrying a big, uh, maybe even bigger big flotation device. Maybe this alligator is very scared of water. He prefers bikes. And then there's a story for us to tell there to find all the details of why is he scared of water and alligator scared of water. What would lead him to that? Will he be able to overcome his fear of water? Maybe you can write your own story and tell me what is going on with this alligator. I'd love to hear that. And maybe he's writing to some swim lessons or somewhere else, I don't know. We could find out. So I'm gonna make him a little bit smaller and we're gonna make one third creature right here. Maybe we can make this alligator even a little bit smaller so that we have more space. Here we have a very large hot air balloon, which is also a vehicle. And it has a basket. And while I am drawing this hot air balloon, I'm thinking who could be riding this hot air balloon? And maybe it could be something that we expect and something totally unexpected. Like, for example, I'm going to erase this here to give room to our teeny tiny creature. Maybe it's not that teeny tiny. But instead, a very, very big elephant with some, some glasses. Maybe they are sunglasses. And we draw, maybe we can draw here. Let me erase a little bit. And 
a comment here. Or maybe this one's waving. Hello. And we need to draw the back. And the tiny little detail, the tail. Maybe the tail is also moving, saying hello. There we go. So we have three friends and maybe three different stories to tell, right? There are so many things we don't know and that we can make up when we're telling stories. That is a really, really fun thing about fiction. So we have three creatures for now, but I can't imagine and I can't wait to see what you create with your peers. Thank you so much for showing us those characters. I'm sure it's going to inspire some wonderful stories from our audience. Now, I want you all to talk together and think of what are some ways that you can do to help you when you struggle to write. We had some really wonderful questions come from students across South Dakota. So thank you so much to Juana for providing some really great insights. Um, I think she has provided us with valuable information about her experiences and it stands out to us that it is so important to keep going no matter how hard it may be and that you can really do anything that you set your mind to. Hannah, thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure to spend some time with all of you in South Dakota and to learn from all your points of view. I can't wait to see what you all create. And as Hannah mentioned, we all can do great things if we set our minds to it. Um, if you attend school in Black Hills, please stay on past the credits for a special announcement. So just make sure to stay plugged in. But for now, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing time with me. I hope you keep on enjoying reading, writing and creating. I can't wait to meet with all of you again. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. Um, once again, my name is Hannah and I am the director of the Black Hills Reads Initiative. I am so excited to announce that we are once again offering a writing contest to all the third grade students throughout the Black Hills. And this year's theme is, what does home mean to you? Mm -hmm. More information about this contest is going to be coming out soon. Um, but in the meantime, sharpen your pencils and get ready to let your imagination fly. We really can't wait to read what you come up with. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.